We're now going to move on um, to Delcy Engel's talk. Delcy, if you could start sharing your screen um, while I give your introduction. Delcy is an amazing Egypt Centre volunteer with us. Delcy studied French and German at Bristol University before taking a master's and PhD in linguistics at Reading University. During her professional career, Dulcy taught and published research on French, linguistics and English language at various universities, including Wolverhampton, Swansea and Queen's Belfast. Dulcy has volunteered for us at the Egypt Centre since April 2014, where she is an extraordinary gallery supervisor. Dulcy will now highlight her work on a project to transcribe the day books of the collection's first curator in her talk, Kate's Museum, transcribing the day books of Kate Boss Griffith. Thank you, Delcy. Okay. I'll see you, you're muted. Right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, sorry about that. There's a, a slight technical complication with my talk because I can't actually display the PowerPoint. So Ken very kindly made the PowerPoint for me. And I believe because he's in the gallery that Sam is, is uh, in charge of the PowerPoint, but it's my voice. Um, so thanks very, very much again to Ken for making this all possible uh, in particular. Okay, so um, if we can perhaps move to the next slide, please. Okay, here is Kate as a young woman. So Kate Bosser was born in Wittenberg, Germany in 1910. She gained a PhD in Classics and Egyptology at the University of Munich in 1935 and then took up a post at the Berlin State Museum. However, she was dismissed soon after when it emerged that her mother was of Jewish origin and her mother would later sadly perish at the notorious Ravensbrück camp. Kirta fled to Britain and undertook research work at the Petrie Museum and the Ashmolean in Oxford. There she met fellow Egyptologist Gwyn Griffiths and they married in 1939. Next slide, please. There you are. This is when they're newly married. They settled in Wales and became involved in the Welsh literature movement. Kirta Bossa Griffiths learnt Welsh during this period, later publishing literary works in Welsh. When Gwyn took up a lectureship position at University College Swansea, Kate, as she was now known, became honorary keeper of archaeology at what is now Swansea Museum, the oldest museum in Wales, founded in 1841 as the Royal Institution of South Wales, or RISW, and she remained involved there for many years. Through their friendship with well, fellow Welsh Egyptologist David Dixon at UCL, Gwyn and Kate Griffiths were instrumental in bringing part of Henry Wellcome's Egyptological collection out of storage in the Petrie Museum to UCS. In 1971, 92 cases arrived in Swansea from London, containing around 4,500 items, which make up just over 80% of the items in the collection. Next slide, please. So with that loan, a small teaching collection in the classics department was transformed into the Swansea Welcome Museum, which was also known as the Swansea Welcome Collection of Egyptian Antiquities. And it first opened to the public in 1976. Kate was honorary curator of the collection from 1971 until the 1990s. She died in Swansea in 1998, aged 87. During her time at the museum, she unpacked, restored and cleaned objects, lobbied for better facilities, equipment and repairs. She identified, researched, catalogued and published objects from the collection, welcomed students and scholars, supervised postgraduates and temporary museum staff, corresponded with Egyptologists from around the world, visited Egyptian collections and gave conference papers. She set up display cases, labels and boards ready for the official opening in June 1976 and continued to catalogue and research objects throughout the years. 
With the invaluable help of Roger Davis, the arts faculty photographer, and Kate's most important museum assistant, she built up a collection of photographs, slides, and films about the collection using the technology of the period, in particular, particular the slide tape. Of course, there were no computers or mobile phones. The communication was by landline, telephone, or by letter. Drafts of document were handwritten before being typed up. Artifacts were catalogued using file cards and sticky labels. Copies of photos and articles were made by Xerox machine. And so we come to the day books. And here is a, an example of the transcription screen with a, uh, um, a, uh, the, the slide of her day book on the right. So we know quite a lot about her activities from these day books. So far, 14 have been found, dating from 1972 to 87. Through Ken's initiative, these have been scanned and a group of volunteers have been involved in transcribing them since 2018. And so far, I think I've transcribed about 11 of these um, and it's hoped they'll pro will pro prove a useful resource for researchers. Each book contains around 150 to 200 pages of Kate's rather challenging handwriting. Mostly written in English, Kate also writes in German, Welsh and French. She includes sketches of objects and copies of hieroglyphic inscriptions and also of Greek and Latin. The day books are a diary of her activities in the museum, research notes from textbooks, to-do lists, lists of objects to be photographed, to be placed in certain cases, to be sent for conservation, rough drafts of correspondence, talks and articles, teaching notes for postgraduates, decisions on decor and repairs, plus gossip, usually written in German and in Welsh to hide from prying eyes, overheard snippets of college intrigues in the senior common room and not always flattering descriptions of the people she meets. So here I'm going to focus on three facets uh, and give you, show you some extracts from the books. So next slide, please. So in November 1975, a March date was suggested for the official opening with slides, address of Dr. Dixon and handing over, visit of museum sherry party in the staff common room. So there's work to do. And here you see a list of the jobs she thought she'd need to do. Filling in a pole of ventilator, getting responsible person from works department to decide how to store monuments. Okay, lintel and studio of guardian to be put up. Copying out of case descriptions, photo of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Also arranging of the Mana case, new perspex case for crocodile, choosing of pictures for window wall, putting up a mana corner, Horus the Saviour corner, translation of labels. Now, as Ken actually just mentioned, David Dixon insisted on bilingual labels for the collection, and that would have been welcomed by Kate. And of course, now it is a law in Wales that public documents and displays are bilingual. So next slide, please. Um, here we can see um, Telefon, um, she uses the German spelling, from works department, there's no money to do the work order to finish museum, pediment for statue, fixing stone slab, painting, filling hole, shelving. Strangely enough, I should be glad if opening were postponed as I've finished all major work and I don't like to be pressed with finishing of minor details. Students could come to see all the same. The moment of reckoning has come as predicted, like playing chess. And in 1976, we learn that the opening is now scheduled for June. And if we can move to the next slide, please. Okay. And here we find that the, um, the next, that the actual opening took place on the uh, 16th of June with the mayor, the mayors of Swansea and representatives of RISW and the Glyn Vivian Art Gallery, where a closed circuit film was shown of collection in which members of the classics department took active part. Uh, this part, this film is made in Welsh and English and is played to school classes before they actually see the museum room. And this is a fantastic video which Ken showed us just about an hour ago. And I was delighted to see it because it really brings these books to life. And so next slide, please. And there you see the picture of the official opening. So 
Now I'm going to talk about briefly about arranging a travelling exhibition. In, eight, in the 80 to 81 day book, we learn about objects from the exhibition taking, being taken to Aberystwyth University in October 1980 for an exhibition called Yi Hlong, The Ship, to coincide with the awarding of a prize for a novel of that title, which had an ancient Egyptian theme. And here you can see the original poster for that exhibition. And on the next slide, you can see the list of, in English and Welsh, of some of the objects which um, would be going to the, the exhibition. And we can see we've got beads, shabti, alabaster ve vessel. And on to the next slide. Thank you. We have a mummy, arm mummy, and mummy case from Budapest. Now this one is quite interesting. Um, this is her special sort of shorthand. It's not actually a mummy from Budapest. It's a W944, a 22nd dynasty cartonish coffin fragment, which was studied by Laszlo Kakuzi, the esteemed Hungarian Egyptologist who worked at Jutras University in Budapest. And we can see him on the next screen. This is what the, the, the object, and here is Laszlo. So that is what she calls the Budapest mummy case. The third thing I wanted to focus on was receiving donations after the main one, of course, from uh, the Wellcome Trust. And first of all, from an individual. And so if we can have the next slide, please. Um, the second half of it is, is, we can see the name Barbara Elder and an address in California. So uh, she says, Anthony, that's on Anthony Donahue, who was mentioned earlier this afternoon by Carolyn, a great friend of the museum, and someone from UCLA, California, received presentation of leftovers from antique trader, Roman glass from Egypt, Celtic heads of glass bowl, two Tarentum necklaces of terracotta scarabs, round pieces of translucent Roman glass with pattern, selling for Joel Malta and Co. Classical numismatics. And if we go to the next slide, in the um, college, she wrote in her day book, and then it was, uh, came, was published in the uh, college newsletter, one of the first visitors of Mrs. Barbara Elder from Los Angeles, whose ancestors emigrated from Wales in the 18th century. She very kindly presented to the museum a collection of colourful Roman glass objects, mainly parts of bracelets from Alexandria, which will be shown eventually in the new Greco-Roman Greco room of the Wellcome Museum. So Joel Malta, this dealer, had a large antiques business in Los Angeles specialising first in antique, antique coins, then in wide, a wider range of artefacts. In 2000, he pleaded guilty to selling stolen, stolen relics. However, we know that Barbara Elder worked for him and she edited at least one volume of the Collector's Journal, which he published. Um, so let's have a look at the donations and Ken's done a lovely photo for us. You can see um, the uh, the glass at the top, the gla Islamic glass bangle fragments, two glass fragments, two terracotta scarab necklaces, and at the bottom, four shards from Roman glass vessel in the shape of faces. So that shows us the whole of the elder donation. Now moving on to a larger organisation and a bigger donation, and that's Exeter, to Exeter Museum. So if we could have the next slide, please. Um, so it's January 82, after the ice. After inquiry in Exeter, where the, weather can, where, where the weather conditions are excellent, keep to date arranged to fetch mummy case. Miss Straw is out for luncheon between one to two. Journey takes four hours each way. And on Tuesday, fetch coffin from Exeter between eight to 19 o'clock. Driver, Phil Thomas from Taibach. With the assistance of Emma Davis and principal's curtains. Uh, taken overnight to the room of research students. So if we could have the next photo, Kate has actually got the coffin here lying on the principal's curtains, which um, she obviously took from uh, the university and had no hesitation as using to protect the mummy in transportation. And I think that's a fabulous photo. Um, and if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, Tell Eddie to phone the uh, RISW. He later on appears with Bethel. I show them the research room with the mummy case on two tables. 
Problem, how to remove it as quickly as possible. Roger takes photos of chief scenes, but still has difficulty in bending down. Gwyn sees the whole of the coffin for the first time and thinks I might want to take, make it my theme in the Canada conference. Xerox material concerned with scenes on coffin, but I'm still puzzled by the underworld scene. And then there is a letter below to David Watkins of the Cardiff University Conservation Laboratory. We've just received from the Museum of Dexter a whole wooden coffin, of almost 3,000 years old and of a very fine quality, as the sides are covered with mythological scenes like the creation of the world, the weighing of the heart in the Last Judgment. It is sycamore wood covered by painted and plaster and varnish. Although woodworm got into it, there seems to be a fair chance of saving it. At the moment, we have not yet unpacked it completely, and perhaps it'd be a good thing for us to take it to Cardiff, as it is without upsetting it anymore. And as we've already heard, the museum still has a working relationship with the Cardiff Conservation Lab and regularly sends objects there. And their conservation forms part of the practical work for the MA students. And you know, we can see the coffin today in all its glory uh, uh, and is a centerpiece in the House of Death. And in conclusion, I want to talk about her very wicked sense of humour and what must be the favourite page I have in the books I've transcribed so far. She received a letter in an envelope wrongly addressed to her and not only read it, but transcribed it in English, despite an attempt to hide the issue by using a German phrase at the top of the page. As for the content, the person who wrote this has misunderstood exactly how welcome items came to Swansea and seems to regret a time when anyone could literally pick up antiquities in Egypt and bring them home for their own collections. So she's written, Der Lauschen an der Wand, which means basically eavesdropping, listening at all. I received wrong letter in envelope written by Gibbs and read, I was invited to a newly formed Egyptological Museum at Swansea University by Dr. Kate Boss Griffiths. She and her husband are Egyptologists at the university, known her for years. She's helped me with my collection. They're off to Egypt on 20th of March, guests of the Egyptian government. The collection was part, 90 cases, of the Welcome Archaeological Expedition, Egypt, Telaram El Amarna. There were fabulous exhibits exhibits found at Amarna, huge complete vases, complete necklaces, jewellery, sculptures collected 1900 to 1908 when pickings were a go-go. Nowadays we can hardly find a small shard of Amarna pottery. So these uh, extracts give a real flavour of the treasures hiding the pages of Kate's day books and a wonderful record of her legacy to the Egypt Centre. She was a truly indomitable woman, a refugee who became a leading figure in Egyptology and Welsh literature, and she will not be for forgotten in Swansea. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dulcie, for that really interesting talk. I've learned a, lot, a little bit more about Kate now, um, and it's really great to uh, hear about Kate's uh, thoughts and feelings, her frustrations with the Estates Department, Never End, and, um, and Ohuma, thank you very much. There isn't any time for questions, Dulcie, but if anyone does have any questions, you could post them in the chat and they'll be passed on to Dulcie. 